Hello everyone, I'm back again, and this time I'm going to do a comparison of OLED and QLED. Now, I'm going to do it a little bit different than other reviewers though, because unfortunately my TVs are too large and I can't set them side by side next to each other. So I'm going to basically go through details on the OLED first, and then I'm going to go over to my room and go over the same details on the QLED. So, that being said, there are some things that OLED can do better, and there are some things that QLED does better. Let's get into it. So I'm going to start with this title screen here because I think that it's very reminiscent as some of OLED's strengths. Now, if you take a look at this red pattern down below here, note how much smoke particle effects are going on down below. Also note how dark the red is. That'll be that'll uh, show a difference for the other TV later on. Note that when Yagami blows his smoke here, how it comes out. You see that? And it looks like kind of a particle effect of blue smoke. And yeah, particle effects and just details in general. In fact, in regards to that, look at Yagami's hair as well. You can see clearly somewhat of an outline as to how his hairstyle is going to look in the game. All right. I think I've yammered on enough. Let's go into our game. Now I've saved at the exact same point on both TVs and both consoles, so bear with me here. Okay, so this is perfect. So standing in the street of Kamarocho, if we take a look at the ground here, look at the way that the water is shown and the way that the ground is shown with the, uh, with the uh, texture detail, especially with the reflections in the water here. And the OLED is able to pull out details like that in spades. Now, if we zoom in on our character here, Yagami will notice that his jacket has a texture to it and also a shine. Note how his hair, as the light hits it, textured, is showing in this particular little comparison here. Also note the texture on Yagami's pants. Now note how the lights are shining at Yagami here as we turn him around to look at the Hotel Modern Square sign. And then also even just the texture on the buildings, in the brick there, and anyone who's kind of coming up to us maybe from behind like this dude. Also note how dark this scene is. Now this camera unfortunately adds a lot of blue light, so it may not look as dark to you. But I can uh, promise you that this ground looks pure black and so does this up here and it should because OLED's strength is pure blacks. Also note the clarity in just the image overall. Pretty sweet right? Now another thing I want to go over quickly which a lot of reviewers don't touch upon is motion blur. LEDs use a little kind of trickery called motion blur. And the reason why they do this is because it makes images seem smoother than they actually are. But our human eyes are perfectly tricked by it. If you've never owned an OLED before, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Because all you've ever known is motion blur on LCD LED TVs. So what am I referring to? So my example here will be when we spin around the character... Note how there's no blur effect going on and that we can perfectly see the character's model. This is because OLED's response times are so instantaneous that it doesn't actually need to blur the image in order to fool our eyes. However, the catch-22 to this is that we get something called judder when we're playing 30 frames per second games. So, when, you know, you gotta kind of take the good with the bad. I've gotten used to it and honestly I barely notice it now. Uh, but every once in a while, sometimes, 
Motion seems to be a little sluggish, but again, it's because I played on an LED TV for so many years. All right. Before we continue, I'm also just going to go into the map. The map, not the skills, Martin. Where's the map? There's the map. So note how kind of punchy the orange looks, but you know, not completely overpowering. You can see how the map has whatever in it. Now, on an OLED, an OLED will sharpen the image so much that you'll be able to see little blemishes that you wouldn't otherwise find unless you were looking for them. Case in point, if we go over to this side of the screen here, we can see lines, I'm not sure how well that's coming up on camera, in our gray here. Now, some might worry, is that vertical banding? No, it's not. It's actually this game and the way that they've uh, kind of put this map image in and how it reacts to motion. So as you can see, as I move the map around, so too do the lines move with the map and then the lines disappear when you get to the white here. Now, just to be <laughs> sure of this, of course, I did do the grayscale test and my OLED was perfectly fine. So I know for sure it's the game. All right, that being said, now that you know all the, of these differences, let's move on to the QLED. Now bear with me because I'm gonna have to get up from my chair, get the disc out of my console, move to the other console and the other TV and load up a file on that TV. So this is gonna take some time. Try and be patient with me. I'll be right back. Sorry guys, but you're going to have to look at my floor and my feet for a minute or two. Oh, what did I just do? Okay, we're back. So this is QLED technology, and you might be wondering, well, how is this even a fair comparison? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the Q9FN was primarily designed to compete directly with OLED in 2018, and it does its darndest. But as you can see already, there's some differences. So let's go over them just from this title screen alone. If we take a look at the red here, look how much kind of more pinkish the red looks in this image. And also just like the difference in how smoke is blown from Yagami here. Still not bad considering, but there isn't as much of this. Now I'm not sure if the camera's doing this justice, but it's more murky looking. It's not like very sharp particle effects, if that makes sense. Sorry guys, but this is on a PS4, so it might take a little bit longer to load. I'm doing my best. And no, being on a PS4 doesn't change the graphics at all, so no one come after me about that, please. 
All right, so here we are again. We're in the exact same spot that we were in the other game. Note, already we can see some changes. So there is water there, but it's not as pronounced. Also, note how the ground looks around Yagami. It's missing details. It's even more noticeable in person. Like the camera's catching things that the TV's not actually showing me. So, you know, there is that. Also, the image itself is not as dark. Uh, note that uh, even just the road is not as dark and neither is the upper area here either. Now that being said, that is to be expected. Now, this TV does have a contrast ratio of 9,000 something to one though. So it's not like it's any slouch in that department. Black levels are very good on this TV. But it's still in person, maybe not on camera, but in person it looks murkier by comparison. Now that being said, what else can we glean from this image? We're gonna go over here here. Note how the difference between how the light is being shown on an LED versus an OLED. It doesn't feel like it's kind of shining at you as you turn and look at it. It's more so just kind of background, almost like image noise in a way. You know, people don't hate me. I'm just kind of going over what I see. Note how you really have to kind of turn the camera around to really see how everything looks. The bricks are not as pronounced unless you kind of zoom in on them. Um, even the bricks on the building there are not as pronounced. If we zoom in on Yagami's jacket, there's a shine, but you can just barely make out the material details. When we try to see Yagami's hair, it's not bad, but a little bit of the detail overall is actually crushed. Now let's talk about that difference. Motion blur. Not sure if the camera will pick it up, but I'm going to try. We're going to circle around Yagami here, and yeah, there it is. There it is, folks. There's motion blur like crazy. Now, even just this image overall, and I'm not sure if the camera's doing it justice, but it looks almost like a faded painting in comparison to the OLED. Now, I know why this is. This is because we have, you know, LED backlighting and uh, dimming zones on LEDs versus, you know, self-emissive pixels. It's just, some may, may even say this comparison is unfair, but I think it's perfectly fair considering that this was Samsung's answer in 2018 to OLEDs. That being said, let's go to our map. Now note how much brighter that orange looks than it did on the OLED. And that's another thing. I noticed the colors on the QLED tend to pop more, but they also tend to be a heck of a lot more saturated. So colors on the QLED are more saturated looking, whereas on the OLED, they're more natural looking almost and also the OLED is able to pull out particle effects a lot better than the QLED is. But what are some advantages of the QLED? Well the first is the obvious one. You're not gonna have bur image burn ever. You can leave this as bright as you want. You can leave it on backlight 50 for the next I don't know four weeks and it'll be fine. There won't be any image burn. You might have worn down the pixels in your TV slowly, but, you know, otherwise not a problem. Another advantage of QLED is brightness. Now, currently the backlight is set to 30. The maximum on this TV is 50. I honestly think that's overkill. I set it to 30 to be more in line with what I think the OLED brightness currently would be sitting at. But I think possibly the OLED brightness may be even lower than that. So, you know, brightness, if 
if you need a bright TV for a, a really bright room or a room that has the large windows or something, QLED's probably your best bet. OLEDs, however, in dark rooms are king. And as you saw in my living room, the OLED held its own very well. Now, QLEDs uh, of today have a very, very good response time. So it's not to say that they're slouching to uh, OLEDs in any way, shape, or form. The newest QLED has a 9 point something millisecond input lag. That's crazy! Most OLEDs can only get close to about 16 milliseconds. Now, mind you, I don't really notice it for input lag. And as for response time, it's like, I don't know, 0 0.1 milliseconds or something like that. So it's so instantaneous that most of the time you probably would never pick up on it anyway. But it should be mentioned. Another thing about QLEDs is they're heavy suckers. Like this TV here is probably about a couple hundred pounds, especially with that stand. And I've found that sometimes the stands that Samsung gives you are not very good in quality. They snap, they break. My parents have a 65 inch version of this TV and the stand broke twice. So, I mean, because of the sheer weight of the TV when they were trying to move it around. Needless to say, they haven't tried to move it again, but hey, it's, it is what it is and it's worth pointing out. The other thing about QLEDs, unless you're going to go all the way up to 8K, um, HDMI 2.1 is only on one port and on this particular QLED because it came out the I can't talk QLED because it came out in 2018 it has zero HDMI 2.1 ports but the question is do you actually really need that I mean how important is 120 frames per second to you at 4k because that's really the only difference that 2.1 brings with it other than of course Atmos which you could easily get through an eARC port So yeah, that about sums it up. So what do you guys think of the differences? Or do you think that I should have pointed out more? Or do you think there's anything I missed? Comment down below if you think so. If you like this video, smash the like button. If you didn't, smash the dislike button if you think I'm a big nerd. Ding that bell if you want to see what I come out with next. Now would be an amazing time to subscribe if you haven't done so already. <clears throat> I may not update my site as much as others, but I try to make sure that every content that I release is meaningful to you. That being said, guys, stay healthy and stay safe in this pandemic, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now. Oh, but I'd like to know one little thing before I go. What do you guys prefer? OLED or QLED? Or why? And why would that be? Leave me a comment in the comments section below. Bye for now.